Right, we're live with Michael Fry. I say we're live, but we're pre-recording this podcast. Let me stick it into a little gallery view here. Oh my God, the absolute trouble I'm at to having. How are you, firstly, Michael? I'm okay. I'm not too bad. (laughs) Surviving, like everyone else, I think. Surviving like everybody else. Sorry, I'm an hour late. Um, I said I'd discuss it on the podcast with you um, because I want the public to know how much of a shite bag I am, basically. Um, (laughs) What happened was, right, I got, I got a new desk today. I know that's not a good excuse for being an hour late, but I'll show you this desk um, on, on the webcam here. It's an absolute beast. It's, it's to fit a load of monitors, right? Mm, oh, my God. But what happened was last night, I couldn't sleep, right? And do you, know, do you ever notice whenever you can't sleep that someone always really arrives extra early? Yeah, yeah, so, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, so the yeah. desk man arrived at like 7 a.m. and started doing the desk. So I kind of went on without sleep for the whole 24-hour cycle. So he was making the desk all day and I was helping him make the desk. So then I was like, I knew I had the podcast and he was finished at about 5 o'clock. And um, I went for a nap. But like, I just, I, I must have turned my alarms off in my sleep. And then when I got up, I had to set up all the computers. So I'm actually, I'm actually on, not on my pro setup at the minute. I'm on me, 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 me B setup. So I do apologize for all this. I'm going to crack open a can because of, as you can tell, this might be the most stressful start to any podcast ever. There's an arms going off. It's all, it's all going to hell. How are you, Michael? Sorry about that, man. I'm all right. I've had a less stressful afternoon than you have. I'm okay. Yeah. Tell me about your afternoon because I need some, I need to hear some. I'm all right. Just, I finished work and I went for a run. I bought some new running shoes oh. um, because I assumed the reason I couldn't run is because I didn't have the right gear. Uh, and it just turns out I'm really unfit. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what running shoes did you get? I got some fancy, like they're called Brooks. Oh. Um, so I don't know. They're like bright. They're highlighter green as well. Um, just because I want to be oh. seen at night. You know, if I'm going running or whatever. So I don't know. I was just like bright colours. So <laughs> So you didn't get the Oasics. Do you ever see people who get the big chunky Oasics? What are they called? How do you pronounce that? O- Oasics. I think, I think it's just Asics. Yeah. yeah Asics. Yeah. They're a real like dad shoe Asics. So oh yeah, like, yeah. Those. But they they've kind of got a little bit popular over the last few years amongst young people I've seen wearing Oasics around the place. Yeah, I think it's like the, the running thing, I think, because people are starting to take care of their feet now. They can't just go running in anything, you know? Do you think people just think, let's get a pair of Oasics and then I'll be fit and I'll do the running and then they leave the Oasics in the in the wardrobe? That's, that's fairly likely. I mean, I, I got these shoes like two days ago and I'm enjoying them now, but I can see myself leaving them for several months at a time. But like, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> What made you get, you just wanted to do, did you just want to up your level in the in the fitness game? Did you get some shorts? Did you get a, <laughs> this is a great podcast, I'm asking a man, did he buy some shorts? <laughs> yeah, well, people were doing that like 5k challenge and like I did it and my time was shit. I got under the 40 minutes, but it was still a shite and I'm like, okay, well, if anything like that rolls around again, I want to just show off, you know what I mean? So like, that's that's kind of what I did it for. So you're prepared. You're prepared for the next challenge. But we might have to make one by the end of this podcast just so that you'll actually get use out of the, the running shoes. Yeah, yeah. Good motivation. Good motivation. By the way, I, I haven't explained why I have green eyebrows and green hair right now either. Um, <laughs> you're just opening the camera. Yeah. Yeah, you just, <laughs> you're just opening the camera and seeing a madman on a steel about a desk. Um, yeah, no, I... I I've dyed my eyebrows and hair for, for charity. Um, it, the fundraiser's over now in case anybody wants to dig in. It's, it's finished now, so don't, don't give me your money. But uh, yeah, we, we raised over a thousand euros. Isn't that, isn't that great now? Isn't that great? That's fantastic. Um, well yeah. But we, we were on, it was, a, it was a live stream I was doing, and the people, we were on like 750 euro, and uh, the people in the live stream were like, oh, we, we, if, we, if we get you to a thousand, will you dye your eye, eyebrows? And I was like, Ah oh, yeah, the eyebrows it'd be grand. I I did it, and then then I woke up the next day and I was like, oh shit, how do I wash this off? And I can't unless like I dye it because I can't like cut my eyebrows off. So they knew what they were oh, doing. Oh, I've done that. Don't do that. No. <laughs> <laughs> I shaved my eyebrows off by accident last year, and what? Genuinely, 
um, yeah, I, I was trimming them and I used the wrong guard on the clipper. And I know you're not supposed to do it with the, the with a shaver or whatever, but I shaved both of them off and I was like, oh, fuck. So I was drawing them on for like a good like month and a bit. And then they were like passable. Oh, but no. all those pictures from that period, I just have no eyebrows. And there's no explanation for it, really. Like there's no context. Oh, no. no reason I did it. It was just something really silly I did. And this so wasn't them off. <laughs> this wasn't even a, a charity thing. How did you so you put the wrong you put the wrong shade? I never even shaved my eyebrows ever, like. I don't think you're supposed to. I was just, <laughs> I was just being lazy. I was trying to like tidy them up. And I did I did put on a guard that was like far too low and just shaved one off. And I was like, oh. well, I better even it out. Oh. Uh, and then I stepped out of the bathroom. The lighting like in the bathroom was like above my face. So I didn't see how bad it was. And then I walked into the light, I was like, Oh fucking hell! What have I done? <laughs> so it wasn't even funny. It wasn't even worth like the the. I, I put it up on Twitter and I got maybe like seven hundred likes on the the video, and that's like, that's not that much. That's it's, not worth like, months of fucking. Like, no, like, it's it's not worth having no eyebrows. Now, how did your family react? Did you just walk in and just go, uh, "How he is? What's the crack of no eyebrows?" But they didn't know what facial expression you were making because you had no eyebrows. They didn't know I, if you were sad. I actually wasn't in my family at the time. So I was like, I was in a house sharing with two other people. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. My flatmate just being like, uh, I need your help. And she was like, what happened? I was like, will you go down and buy me an eyebrow pencil? And she was like, <laughs> okay. And then came back up to the house being like, what the fuck have you done? I was like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just stop. Did you get the right, did you get the right color? Did they look darker than normal? Or did, did you look like a proper uh, horn? On, on a night out like what did you look like it actually like it was surprisingly easy to do it and nobody noticed until i told them i was oh. like well oh. i was like i've actually shaved my eyebrows off and they're like no you haven't i was like no i have and then they kind of be like uh and then you show them a picture of what i actually did and they're like jesus christ and then they go like you're really good at your eyebrows i was like yeah that's, that's the skill i didn't think i had <laughs> like, yeah, so. <laughs> i might i might shave mine off so you're, you're kind of talking me into doing it here no, don't. Because you, <laughs> the you whole said, purpose of me mentioning it was for you not to do it. <laughs> you said nobody noticed, though, because you were drawing it, but maybe I wouldn't draw them on as good as you. I've shaky hands, though, so that could be a very bad idea. I'd end up putting a McDonald's sign. I've been going into the shop with, like, shades on because it's like, I don't mind having the green hair. There's plenty of people have, like, mad color hair, but, yeah. like, um, with the green eyebrows as well, it's like, I've been, I, it, you just look like a fucking madman walking into a spa <laughs> to get it chicken fillet roll or a, a can of Guinness. <laughs> so, so like, a few people have noticed and I forgot that I've, that, I've had, that I have green eyebrows like, and they're like, they're looking at me and I'm like, what are you looking at? And they're like, you have green eyebrows. And I'm like, fair enough. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, so Michael, tell us, how did you get started with all this internet stuff and what, what are you working at now? And tell us a bit about yourself, Michael. <laughs> I yeah I've been doing the whole video thing like regularly for like two years now so that like, like two years ago I did a series of kind of radio sketches and I've been kind of messing around with videos for like six months before that and nothing really took off and then I did the radio stuff and it just sort of blew up because I did like four or five of them in a row over the space of like a week or whatever and it just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger and suddenly it was like oh fuck this is this is really taking off and so you've got like Blind Boy retweeting you, you've Kevin Bridges saying you're funny, you've like all this sort of stuff. And it was just like, oh shit, this is this is going well. And I just kept making stuff and people seem to just like it. So that's that's what's been happening for the last two years. I've just been dicking around on Twitter <laughs> and people have enjoyed it somehow. So I don't know. Um, but I'm kind of looking at like where to go next, if you know what I mean. I think a lot of people like myself, like people who start online there is this kind of gap between like, okay, I go from online videos. Where do I go next? Mm -hmm. Am I a stand up comedian? Am I, you know, a writer? Am I, you know, a radio presenter? Am I all these different things? And there's no real path into any of those things because like doing online videos is a skill in itself. And it's kind of like, okay, I've got that down, but I can't go anywhere else because I've no other skills. So I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's a weird thing, isn't it? Um, I've talked to a good few people about this, few on the podcast and obviously a few a lot more off the podcast it's um i think it's because it's such a new thing that there's no there's no um like specific niche for it just yet do you know what i mean what we're doing uh with, with comedy videos online but I, they, they 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 lead to something 
in the future. Do you know what I mean? I think if, if I'm making sense, they, it'll always lead to something like whether it be radio presenting or, or maybe even just making money from the videos themselves. What made you get started making comedy videos? Like what made you upload the first funny video that you, you were doing or how, um, how did I you get started? I played around with sketches before. Uh, I, I went to like the Gaiety School of Acting when I was like 15 and I did like a weekend thing for like a couple of years. Uh, and we always did like sketches. We made stuff up there or whatever. I enjoyed that. And then I kind of carried it into college, myself and a friend. We had like a sketch show going on with Trinity Players. Um, and I wasn't in it, but I was kind of writing stuff in the background. And then, I don't know, I, I, I was doing a grad program at the time and I was in Coleraine in Northern Ireland. And there's not a whole lot to do up there. And I just got really bored. And I was like, right. And I've been playing around with kind of music and stuff on my laptop. Uh, and I just decided, right, I'm going to film myself doing this because I figured out how to make a voice on the computer talk back to me. So I was like, okay, I'm going to have a bit of fun with this. And that's just what I started doing then. And then it just seemed to work. Like that format seemed to work really well. So it was, it was just kind of a spur of the moment thing, really. You, after the Gaiety School of Acting, it kind of led to, one thing led to the other and you, you started uploading the videos and then they got really popular, basically. Yeah, I think me and, my, me and my friends always have this, we have a weird kind of sense of humor where we'd like to kind of imagine scenarios, if you know what I mean. So me and one of my best friends, <laughs> his, uh, his parents are divorced, right? And uh, every time his dad came to his house, he'd be like, oh, my dad's here. And there would always be a purple van outside. So me and my friend were like, oh, um, your dad is the purple van. So we just about all these scenarios where like, a purple van shows up and it's, it's actually the dad and the purple van talks or whatever. Or like it's his birthday and his dad's late and his dad crashes through the back of the house like a, just a big van and kills all his friend. And like, my friend would run upstairs crying being like, you ruined everything. Like classic kind of divorced parent kind of drama, but like just with a purple van. So <laughs> those kind of stupid like things that you imagine like my my the way I write is usually I'll have a strictly kind of formatted situation I'll have something that everyone knows and is familiar with but then I'll drop a bizarre element into it and that's how radio works so well so I'll have like um you know I, I'd be doing like a ra regular radio segment so it'd be like oh welcome back to you know teen talk with Michael Teen and then you know include someone ridiculous in it or do you know what I mean? I, I, I uh, did a ridiculous segment where, I don't know if you ever listened to Sean Moncrief on News Talk? Yeah, I've heard him. I think I was actually on a game show with him that he was presenting for, uh, was it TV3 at the time? Um, a couple of years ago that never really went anywhere and I lost on the game show. I think it was him. <laughs> but anyway, continue, yeah. sorry. <laughs> no, I did a party at his um, radio show because I love that radio show. And he always interviews like these American authors, these zany American authors. So I did the sketch where it was like, uh, he's interviewing a woman who's written a book about Scooby-Doo, but uh, the book's called Scooby-Doo and the Consumer Price Index. And it's all about Scooby-Doo's impact on fiscal policy in the United States. <laughs> like, that kind of stuff. So I, I love that kind of thing. Just just making a regular situation bizarre by adding a, an unusual element into it. But it's it's a clever type of comedy though, that I think you're very good at you know what i mean it's 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 it, it's not just a ridiculous um scenario there's like wit and cleverness behind the two do you know what i mean like your uh one of my favorite ones you did was the the michael d higgins one <laughs> i know the, the video that you did um <laughs> where you're just talking about uh you uh as as michael d higgins wanting to be a deli counter to help ireland like it's sort of the same situation but it's a deeper it's deeper like um it's deeper it's a deeper element of comedy because you're throwing that as you said like wacky element into a normal kind of conversation and keeping it as that like it's brilliant i love it man yeah i mean that one in particular i because i was working for joe.e at the time and i was doing bits for the presidential election and it was such a ridiculous uh election because we had peter <laughs> casey and we had uh, I don't, thinking back on that was so weird wasn't it bizarre we two of the dragons from dragon's day yeah <laughs> ludicrous like so um yeah i don't know but i, I was watching a lot of michael b higgins stuff for speeches or whatever and i was like yeah i think i could do a good impression of him but i wanted to do a different one so mario rosenstock does one where he's kind of a bit more aggressive uh whereas my one because i the only other thing i've heard about michael b higgins is that he loves the sesh because uh, we had we had Tommy Tiernan in, in a show at one point he was talking about Michael D. Higgins and 
uh, you know, just going out for pints with him. And I heard another story about uh, some lad coming downstairs and Michael Diggins had been out drinking with your man's dad and he was just on the sofa the next morning. So, like, I thought it'd be really funny if we did, like, a really oh, frank hung over Michael Diggins. Like, so, Class. I don't know. Because I feel like there's a lot of jokes about him being small or, like, that kind of stuff, which I don't really like because it's kind of mean and it's, like, on his appearance or whatever. I just like bringing in, like, another silly kind of aspect to his character that nobody else seems to have you know, it's nice that there's some there's some realness behind that as well. The sort of hungover character on the couch, just talking about <laughs> wanting to be a, a deli for Ireland. I yeah. love it. I love it. That's so interesting. So tell us about like your career. What 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 do you do? Like how how has it happened for you? I know you've worked with with Joe. as you said there, and a couple of other. Um, yeah, I mean, Joe was my kind of uh, break into media. If you know what I mean, I I, I was there for about fourteen months, and they hired me. Uh, kind of out of the blue. I mean, I was on the I was on a grad program with Tourism Ireland before that, so I was just doing stuff for the tourist board up the mm-hmm. north or whatever. So it wasn't. Uh, I just had a regular job, and Joe they kind of took me in and they just taught me how to use all the stuff, so social media like Instagram, Facebook, how to how to manage that kind of stuff. I did a lot of commercial stuff as well, and it's interesting to see that side of it. And yeah, I, it takes I, up. I had a marketing background before that anyway, but. Um, yeah, I was there for about 14 months. I took a break. Uh, and now I, I also manage social media, but for kind of a large newspaper paper group in the UK. So um, it kind of gave me that break in, but I've, I've always wanted to see what goes on behind the camera and all that kind of stuff. Because I mean, the social media stuff, the comedy, the kind of, you know, personality stuff that could fade with time. And, you know, it could be, I could be doing well now, mm-hmm. but in years later, you know, what am I going to do it myself? So I like the idea of having something else to fall back on of course yeah 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 uh, I you're, too, you're too smart for us michael you're too <laughs> smart for us <laughs> i'm hedging all my bets on this podcast <laughs> and I can't, i'm an hour bleeding late to start oh. <laughs> right, like i always thought about those lads who like won the x factor and stuff like that and like what are they doing now yeah there's one of them leon jackson who won years ago no nobody fucking remembers this time yeah he's do you know what I mean? Is he, like, is he actually? He is, yeah. And he just, he's not a singer anymore and that's it. And I always just think like, fuck, what, what do you do when you've had that level of, do you know what I mean? Like, <sighs> you've done well for yourself and that's, then suddenly no one remembers you, you know? That's a scary thing as well, isn't it, to think of? Because you could get used to being, you know, popular. Whether, I know it's a different scenario with singing and, and comedy, but it's the same thing if you're, if, you're, if you're adored or liked by, you know, hundreds or thousands of people and then it kind of fades away. That's kind of scary because you're like, what happened? But what the hell? He, he was really popular as well. I remember him years ago. Like he, he was loved on the show and when he won. I wonder how that happens to some of them and it doesn't happen to others. Yeah, I, I think you have to really want it. And I think it has to be a case where people are willing to hire you as well. Like I feel like Jedward couldn't just go and, and work as estate agents because people know who Jedward are. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he was even thinking of like even the lads from One Direction like Liam Payne released an album there last year and it was kind of shit but I was kind of thinking <laughs> what, else, what else is Liam Payne going to do with himself do you know what I mean you can't hire Liam Payne in an office or like do you know what I mean because people just he's still one of those fucking famous yeah, people yeah. in the world like, what do you do with yourself like, you know yeah, yeah well I suppose that's even worse than Leon's case if you just have to drag out your career even, even if you hate it because you've no other choice <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, Jedward could never like say work in a deli because if you walked in and you seen John and Edward making your role, you'd be like, "It's fucking John and Edward." I don't. Yeah, well, I see like that, but like, I like the idea of them applying for one job as as a single person. <laughs> One of them butters and the other just puts this <laughs> like a, a little train that they have in the deli. Oh, <laughs> man, yeah, that, that's that's crazy. Yeah, how that that happens with with X Factor contestants uh, sometimes and, and other elements of fame. I'd love to get I'd love to get them on the podcast. If I do, I'll I'll, I'll bring you on and we can dissect what happened to Leon. Um, <laughs> we managed to get him on. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. We'll, cl- we'll clip this and put it on Twitter and you can give it a retweet with your 30,000 followers and Leon might see it and come on and it'll be a historic moment uh, <laughs> and he can sell us a house. But I can't afford to buy a house, so... But we can pretend. We can pretend that we can 
afford to buy a house. So that way I'd come on the podcast to try and sell us a house and then we could just talk about his failed X Factor career. It's it's not necessarily failed. Like he could just be happy being in a mistake. True, true, true. So true. I don't know. I mean one of the lads from Take That got a university degree and now has a farm and he's not he didn't try a solo career, anything like that. So he's just kind of, you know, happy out. Yeah, maybe it was Leon's choice. Maybe he just yeah. said, I don't want to be world famous. I want to be an estate agent and sell two bedroom houses in Chesney. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 good in that. So if you're happy doing that, you know. Exactly, exactly. So tell us what are your, your plans for the future? Um with, with the comedy, are you planning on doing some stand up? Have you done stand up already or I I went to a stand up class. Uh, and I'm not sure it's for me. Okay. Uh, the, reason, the reason for that is I don't normally do stuff as myself. So everything I do, I'm a character, or it's a sketch. It's not, you know, me. So it's kind of, it's hard to think of like, how would I do a whole set? Would mm-hmm. I do it as one character? Would I do a load of different ones or whatever? So um, like I, I, I went to, I was a judge at the Dublin Fringe last year and it was really interesting to see how other people do live comedy so like tony cantwell and hannah mamalis and people like that they're not just stand-ups they have other elements and stuff like that so yeah i think we explore that kind of arena i think if i were to do live stuff um but i am kind of i'm writing stuff with some other people and um attempting kind of podcasty stuff uh all the time and like i do radio panels all the time as well so um i'm just you know working with lots of different people and seeing what comes out of each thing because there's a lot of like false starts and stuff with media or like you try something it doesn't necessarily work you meet somebody and you work a little bit with them and it doesn't necessarily work so it's kind of you know trial and error but like I'm just enjoying it the way it is like you know I quite like having a job at the moment particularly now because like lots of people aren't making money out of live stuff or whatever so um, I'm enjoying the kind of you know best of both worlds kind of thing at the moment. It's it's scary stand up as well, isn't it? Are, are, do, do, would you be a nervous person at all? Uh, like in oh, terms of oh yeah, absolutely yeah, yeah yeah I I I don't know yeah I don't know because the beats are different with live comedy. So with a, a video or whatever, I know where to put the laughs in, and I'm not waiting for people to shut up laughing. Like, you know I mean? <laughs> yeah. That would annoy me more than anything else is trying to talk over everybody or trying to like figure out when I'm supposed to say something. Do you know what I mean? So. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's just so different. And from what I've heard, the best way to learn is to go out there and die in your arse. And I don't know if I want to die on my arse. So you know. Yeah, I, I've I've died on the arse, man. I've uh, and I, I I don't think I've I think I did one more show after that. Like uh, I tried stand up comedy about five years mm-hmm. ago, and um, I did the first show, which was great because like the first time you do it, you know, you invite. Well, I did. I invited all my friends and stuff along. So no matter what I did on stage, you know, I was going to get laughs and stuff. Mm-hmm. And it went well. And then the second time I did it, I was like, right, I'm just going to challenge myself and, and go to an open mic session on my own. I'm not going to tell anybody and just gauge, see, do I get a laugh? And I did it and I, I got a laugh. And, you know, <clears throat> it wasn't a major laugh I was getting. It was just, you know, a little kind of, <laughs> but I was, people were laughing. It, it was okay. And then the third one I did, I got up on stage and, I was just, for some reason, I woke up that day. It was like a big crowd and it was kind of my first time, you know, dealing with an actual big crowd. Um, <clears throat> so I was kind of very nervous and I got onto stage and I just completely went blank. Like, do you know the way in movies and, and films when they're on stage and, and they go blank and you're like, that would never happen. You'd like, you'd talk. Mm. But it, I swear to God, it happened to me. And it was a weird feeling because it was like, I didn't really forget what I was supposed to be saying. I just, I got such a, a stage fright that I, I completely lost my shit and just froze on stage. Um, but thankfully, like after about a minute or two, which felt like probably a minute, not, not two minutes, uh, 30 seconds to a minute of me just kind of froze. Now, it probably wasn't as noticeable to everybody else as it was to me internalizing everything. Um, someone just shouted up something like, you're very sexy kind of messing. And uh, I, I, I remembered me, me, what I was, what I was doing, and why I was there, and kind of continued on. But I didn't really get many laughs then because people kind of could smell the fear in me, and it, it didn't get, it didn't, it didn't go down well at all. Um, 
and it kind of scared me to, to do it forever then. But I want to get back into it. I'm kind of the same as yourself. Um, I don't know whether I want to do it in, you know, in a, in a character style or in a, in a me narrating lifestyle or, you know, kind of, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm trying to figure it out. It's definitely something that I want to conquer. Um, I don't want to, I don't want to leave it at that, but I am extremely terrified of it at the same time. I'm a very yeah. anxious person. So I know that if I was to get back into it, every time I do it, the whole day I would be nervous thinking of, of it, which is crazy because I can do other things like, like yourself, like I can make videos and put them up online and I don't really give a bollocks about, you know, negative comments or how people perceive me. Um, but it's just that live, that live show buzz. It, if it goes well, it's the best feeling ever. But if it doesn't, it's, it's very morally like people are just looking at you, you know? Mm. So it's, I think that's what, that's what, what's appealing about it as well though, isn't it? Kind of that fear as well. It's kind of like, Hmm, I can give this another bash. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I like showing off. <coughs> I don't want to be challenged on it. Do you know what I mean? I don't want to be able to heckle me. You know, that's, that's kind of the, the scariest thing about it. Yeah. I was talking to one of my friends and she went to a comedy gig or she was, she was performing at it. And these lads who are literally in my school, I know these lads heckled her at it. And I was like, Oh no. And they're really, like, I know they're like, they're funny and stuff. And I was like, if they did that to me, it would destroy me. So it's like, <laughs> there's no way I'm putting myself in that situation. Do you know what I mean? Like, um, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I deal with that very well, which is kind of like why I'm looking at scripted stuff and why I'm looking at characters and stuff like that, because you can't heckle those. You know what I mean? Like you're immune. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'd be good, man. I think you could out with them if they did heckle on stage. I, think, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not very good at the kind of the, the improv stuff with other people or like banter in a lot of occasions. Like I do a lot of radio panels, but I'm always kind of like, why do you keep inviting me back on? <laughs> 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 um, just stare them down. That's just kind of. I do, I don't know. Come up with a plan if they, if you do get heckled. Or I'm kind of giving me self advice here. Oh, mm. maybe let's come up with a plan if if we we should try it together. We should do it together. We should, I, here we go I think we should do it together we should plan it for when all this shit is over with we give it a bash together and if we get heckle, heckled we, or maybe we ask someone to heckle us to get, to get us used to it but not the whole audience like we just mm. we, 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 we say to one person heckle us and, and we make it known that there's one heckler in the audience and maybe it will teach us not to be afraid so much after heckling what do you think? I, I don't know. I don't know. That's still a very false kind of situation. That's the same as inviting your friends to your first gig, if you know what I mean. Like, you can't invite your friends <laughs> to heckle you because they're not going to be, do you know what I mean? You're oh. it. Like, it's not <laughs> true, true, true. Um, I still think we should do one together. We, I'm, I'm going to get you to do one. Um, and we'll do it together. We'll make an event of it. So if you're listening, Michael Fry fans, get ready for him. He's, he's got to do it. I don't know. He hasn't agreed, but we'll just, we'll just go with it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, tell us a little bit about some of the characters that you, you do and, and where did you come up with them and stuff like that? Yeah, I think, I think the main one is the news talk one and it's uh, Michael, whatever it is. So I love the idea of having an infinite number of Michaels with different surnames. You know, like like the Mr. Men universe where people are called Mr. Strong or whatever, and that's their whole thing. I like the idea of there being a Michael, whatever, for whatever kind of reason it is. I love the idea of having ministers for like really innocuous things. Uh, like I did, I did some voiceover work for a little kind of, uh, I think it was like a mini series on YouTube. And I had like the minister for games, Catherine Boggle or something like, you know, just stupid stuff like that where people's surnames are their, are the professions. So I love that kind of shit. And that comes from, uh, like, Little Britain was a huge influence on me. I think that's really formative in my comedy years or whatever. And there's a scene in that, and it's so it's such a small bit of the scene, but it's where Lou and Andy are out on the beach, and Lou goes up to the, the ice cream man, and he just goes, hello, Mr. Chalk Ice Seller. What kind of chalk ices are you selling today? And I just thought that was the funniest fucking thing ever. So it's like, I love the idea of having that kind of really obvious Michael this or Michael Teen, Teen Talk and Michael Teen or fucking that sort of shit. Like um and then another one, I think the the kind of big one that's uh kind of going around on social media at the moment is uh the mother character. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Um I do a very good impression of a middle aged woman. Uh and that is You really not, do. 
You really it's, do. It's quite scary. It, <laughs> people have been saying that as well. Yeah, it's just really kind of, uh, I don't know. It's it's not actually based on my own mother. Because um, I, I imagine in the, in the sketches that my mother is on the end of the phone. So she's, my mother's called Catherine. And that's that's who the character is talking to. <laughs> um, but it, it's based on like a number of my mother's friends, like neighbours I have, women I've worked with, like all that kind of stuff. And like, they all just say the same thing. Do you know what I mean? Like, I feel like there's just, and I, it's it's such an Irish thing. Like, mammies all talk the same and more. It really, it really is, isn't it? What yeah. is that? What is that? I don't, I don't know what it is. Like, they seem to just have a playbook, and I've always wondered, like, when are like my female friends gonna turn into that? Is there a oh, point yeah. where you start saying things like that, or will we have our own version of? of Irish mammies do you know what I mean like, it's interesting yeah I've never thought about that it's actually interesting to see where what will become of the Irish mammy like will it be oh that's such an interesting one because there's so much technology it's just a different generation really isn't it obviously it is a different generation but um, yeah Jesus I never thought that yeah technology is an inter- it's interesting you said technology actually because like we're uh, a unique kind of generation in that we've grown up knowing more about technology than our parents. Uh, so like we're teaching our parents how to use things. We have, you know, the mommy finger, you know, when they open a phone and they're like this sort of shit. Like, oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Although, <laughs> although you maybe know? you do morph into it because I, I started to do that recently. And my girlfriend was even saying, are you using one finger to, to, to like with your, because I was like this, you know, for people listening on Spotify, I have I had my right hand over my index index finger sticking out, and I was kind of just gone. Like I didn't notice myself doing it. It's something yeah. I've never I've never done before. I'm 29. I'm hitting 30 in November, so maybe I'm. This is the first sign of, you know, you just kind of do it by accident, because yeah. she was breaking her bollocks laughing. I, I didn't realize why it was so funny, and she was like, "That's what all the the you know, the Irish mammies, the L ones and Elflas do with with, with their phones." She was like, I know you're a little bit older than me because she's like 25. Um, she was like, I know you're a little bit older than me, but what the hell, Jamie? She was genuinely disgusted in me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe they will, Mark. I don't think, I don't think they will. I think they'll be their own version of the Irish mammy. I think it'll yeah, be. Yeah, I mean, like to think about it, say like when we have kids or whatever, uh, like, like to think that your parents would have been on tinder and would have been like yeah what we do now like that kind of thing and i just think there's there's a knowledge gap between our parents and us you know in terms of like social media and like what's going on and stuff like that where we're plugged in all the time True. So when our kids are growing up we're gonna know what they're doing and we're gonna have more of an idea than our parents ever did so it's kind of i don't know i don't it's know a, if I'm, I'm, it's yeah. a weird one yeah I, I have two little boys and um like it's our it's already a weird situation because you know, my my son is on is is uh, eight, and he's he wants to be on you know Snapchat, and I'm like no, because like mm. I know when I was like you know 13, I know it's he's, he's only eight, but I know when I was like 13, 14, I got my first laptop or or 12 or whatever, and the stuff I was looking at on that laptop, you know, <laughs> was yeah, yeah, yeah. And my, my parents had no clue. They were downstairs watching fucking Coronation Street, and I was upstairs watching probably hardcore porn you know <laughs> <laughs> on the laptop um but i i don't know we have a little bit of a, more of a, an upper hand i think because we have that experience with technology um but yeah we'll be interested to see what our kids see us as do you know what i mean hmm, like yeah, i wonder yeah. what 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 traits we will have maybe they're you know with the new apps that are coming out it's kind of already happening you know, TikTok's doing very well and a lot of people in their late 20s and 30s don't really know too much about TikTok. There's a lot of people that do, but there's definitely a majority of people are like, what's t- I don't use TikTok, that's a lot of bollocks. Whereas the teenagers and kids are definitely mad about TikTok. Um, mm. Are you on TikTok yourself, actually, Michael? Uh, I think the first time I ever felt old was when I opened TikTok. And I was like, <laughs> same, oh, same. what is happening here? I mean, it's, it's the lip sync and stuff I don't get. You know when they have like a clip from like The Hangover or like a Disney film and they're just mouthing over it and I'm like, and it might have thousands of likes. And yeah. Like, this isn't funny. This isn't, <laughs> there's no joke here. It's just you mouthing something. They and love it. Popular. So like, I don't know. But then there's some genuinely good stuff on TikTok. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. It's taken over that space that Vine had. Um, 
and just a kind of short video clip kind of thing that's doing really well, if you know what I mean. But like, I suppose like there was loads of shite on Vine as well. There's loads of shite on Twitter, <laughs> every other kind of app and network. So I don't know. TikTok's just another another thing, you know. It's um, it's a weird one. I've been like re-uploading kind of old little clips from old videos that I did, and some of them have been getting like, you know, like quarter of a million views and forty-seven thousand likes. And I'm like, I don't know whether to be happy because it's like, to me, it seems like, uh, you know, if I got that on Twitter or Facebook or, mm-hmm. you know, Instagram, I'd be like, oh yeah, deadly. Do you know what I mean? Loads. But for me, it's like, oh yeah, it's, it's grand. Like, I don't even know if the numbers are correct on it, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. I feel like that as well. I don't know. It's, it's a weird thing. Like some of the older stuff that I did with Joe was uploaded to TikTok after I left Joe. And my brother was like, oh, I saw you on TikTok. And all my friends saw you on TikTok. We've been, like, they sent it to him and stuff. And I was like, this is bizarre. Like, I'd never reached that age or audience before. Because mm-hmm. he's like, seven, like 17 at the time. And I was mm-hmm. like, this is bizarre. You know, that kind of way. And I was oh. kind of like, you're all too young to like what I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the scary thing as well. But, but like, like, if, you put it, if you put it out there, it's on the internet. So it's not, mm-hmm. it's not up to you who, who watches. But yeah, that's the scary thing as well. I was kind of like... Because a lot of the stuff that I put on TikTok, and maybe it, it got so much attention is because the, it, it's, a, it's not the usual type of content, content that would be on TikTok. Like I just literally mm-hmm. edited little clips into 30 second, or 30 second uh, videos and put them on. Um, but it'd be more satirical and more, definitely more controversial content that I put up on it. So maybe that's why it done well, or maybe TikTok's just trying to make me feel good and keep me on the platform. And <laughs> like, but that, like I've been stopped by a few people. Like I was coming home from the shop the other day um, and like this like 11 year old girl came up to me and I thought she was about to like, you know, in, I live in Finglas, so sometimes kids just tell you to fuck off for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> so she just went here are you and i was like like obviously i don't want to be talking to a little girl on the street either do you know what i mean when i'm coming home with me shop. um it was before i had green hair so i didn't look as bad um I, but i just goes yeah all right and she was like i love your tiktoks but like i was like oh thanks very much i have to go now because I'm, I'm definitely not going to be talking to a little kid on the street but also i was like oh shit like my content on tiktok isn't really for you know 11 year olds i know there's 11 year old on, yeah. t- on tiktok but there's 11 year old on facebook and twitter and all the the other malarkey as well but yeah it's such a weird one it's such a weird uh it's a weird platform but it seems to be booming at the minute TikTok. yeah i mean we had a similar experience when i was at joe we did the show called argue me and it was on snapchat and it was put on the main discover page of snapchat because they were experimenting with new content or whatever and they were like oh yeah you guys can just have this slot but what we didn't know is that went worldwide. So like we were on the main discovery page, in like America, like India, wow. all this sort of stuff. And we got millions of views and stuff. But like it never seemed to translate into Ireland. And then Carl, who was like the star of it, was out in like Dundrum Shopping Centre one day. And this eight-year-old came up to him and went, are you Carl from Snapchat? <laughs> <laughs> I really don't like this. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's, that's how I felt as well. I kind of... In that moment, I kind of was like, am I doing life correctly here? <laughs> you know what I mean? Am I, am I setting a good example here? Or what am I doing? Um, and then, as I said, my, my son's only eight. And he he said to me the other day, oh, dad, I felt it might, well, it was before, it wasn't the other day, it was before um, the, the, the kids were off school. But he said, dad, uh, one of the boys in my school follows you, follows you on TikTok. Now, this for me was like, I was like, oh no, because I don't even let my son see what I make because it's not, mm. it's definitely not suitable for that age group. Like it's adult yeah, yeah, content yeah. mainly like, a, or you are teenage, you know, content. But um, for him to say that, I was like, Jesus, how irresponsible for, I don't, I don't really think this is probably a strong, one, but I don't think, you know, young kids should be on TikTok to be honest. Yeah. Um, I, really, I think even like, even say, when we were growing up the whole 13 years old being allowed on like Bebo and Facebook and all those platforms, I even think that's too young. Do you know yeah, what I mean? It's, yeah. there. it's just not appropriate like for, for kids of that age or whatever. And it's kind of that age where you can't trust kids to be nice to each other. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. 
loads of problems with bullying with like 14 year olds 13 year olds like that kind of age group and it's when they're most vulnerable so it's kind of like yeah i i don't like the idea of anybody younger than like 16 being on social media myself. yeah no but it's it's kind of it's it's kind of like tolerated though isn't it now nowadays um i find with a lot of my you know cousins or relatives they're all like obviously i can't say that because hmm. you know people parent in their own way but they're all on these social media platforms and it's like no i, I just i've seen what's on them you know even tiktok like i know it's fairly innocent and it's mainly voiceovers but there's there's a lot of you know um there's a lot of smut on tiktok as well you know um yeah i don't know it what is you... that thing of I remember watching. I went to see Ralph breaks the internet. You know, Wreck-It Ralph. Yeah, yeah. I, love it. That was impressed, and that was the first time I'd ever seen anything that went. You know, because it's always oh, don't go on the internet or, or this this is dangerous or whatever. It's the first time I've ever seen anything aimed at kids. It was like the internet's great, but look out for this sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Avoid yeah, yeah. this. Avoid that. The other okay, and you can find the best stuff ever, and it's really useful for information and funny stuff or whatever but just be careful about comment sections and spam and all that kind of stuff. And that was like, okay, that's the first time I've ever seen that. So I think maybe parents are looking at it that way and that like they're going to be on it eventually mm-hmm. or whatever. And they need to have that kind of literacy to understand, you know, when things go wrong or when they find something that they don't understand or that's inappropriate for them, that they have the tools to kind of cope with that later on. So mm-hmm. I, I get kind of that approach as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's an odd one. I think it's one, as society that we're still kind of figuring out you know um i don't think there's there's a a, a pure right way but just for me i I, i'm not letting my kids on i'm gonna try to keep them away from it as long as i can you know (laughs) and just to give them just they've plenty of time when they're you know older to do that in my opinion social media and all that just yeah we, we, I, they already, they're already addicted to, you know, Fortnite and, and PlayStation. I don't want them having another element of, you know, technology to get addicted to as well. So um, just for me, yeah, I think, I don't know, I think under 10, you shouldn't be on TikTok, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think maybe if, if you're 12 and you're, you're, you're you know, responsible enough to, to be allowed to, to go on, I think that's okay if you sc- see something scroll past that you don't like. But it's, it's an interesting subject that... that um, it's going to keep evolving, I think, as especially because a lot of parents, um, a lot of parents do know what's going on, but I think a lot of parents don't know what's going on either. Do you know what I mean? As you said, it's kind of that little, still, still that little bit of a gap between parents and and children. So in some cases, where you know they're a little bit oblivious to what little Jerry's doing in his room, you know, with the phone. Um, mm, yeah, but I yeah. think as the generations go on, that will change, and hopefully. Um, things will will um, improve in terms of how we manage our kids and, and what we let them see online, you know? Mm, yeah. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> we're going on a tangent about social yeah, that media. Was, yeah, I don't know how that So how you, have you been keeping throughout this uh, COVID um, lockdown? Uh, you said you're still working and stuff like that, so... Yeah, yeah. So it's been fine. Like I, I have been working from home since uh, about the fourteenth of March. So I mean, it's been a long time. I flew home from London on the twenty fourth just because it made more sense to come home and, and be with my family rather than on my own in an apartment in London. Yeah, um, true. Because my flatmates had both gone back to their family homes, and I wasn't sure. You know, like you, you, you kind of catastrophize. You think, okay, if I wake up one morning and I can't breathe. Mm-hmm. who am I going to talk to or who do I do you know what I mean because I didn't know my neighbours or anything like that so I was like right I'd rather just go home um, and like things in the UK aren't going very well at the moment so it's kind of like right I made the right decision there but yeah just just been plugging away like I, I was lucky enough to keep my job and be able to work from home so it hasn't been a big issue but yeah I'm kind of I don't think I'll ever turn down going to the pub again I don't think I'll ever turn down <laughs> an invitation to go somewhere and I think about all the times I did that and I'm like kicking myself now because I'm like oh you could have had the best time ever like that kind of way so yeah I do miss people you know yeah yeah oh, I feel the same myself um it's it's it kind of makes us realize what we took for granted doesn't it like mm. the normality of life that we just thought was this is the way it's going to be well I just never never seen anything like this coming um i was kind of stuck in the loop of oh this is this is just life this is how 
things are. I was sh- making a little series um, where I go around all the counties of Ireland and, you know, ask a question, sort of a Vox Pop series. Mm-hmm. Don't rob me idea if you're watching the fucking podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I got like, you know, I had, I had, I was working on it for a few weeks, but I was kind of doing it not when I was when I was doing it, you know, when I was recording it and, and out on the streets, I was doing it one hundred percent, you know, giving giving it me all. But I was, you know, I could have done I got six episodes done, whereas I could have got, you know, twenty two episodes done. Yeah. And it's like, oh shit, if I could go back and see this coming or realize how lucky I am to be able to just fly around the country and talk to people on the street. Um I would have, you know, definitely had a different mindset doing it. But I don't know when people are going to be comfortable to talk on the street to a stranger anytime soon, you know, so. Yeah, that's, there's so many things. I think it will really affect the way we talk to each other and the way we deal with things. Like even going to a pub, the idea of like going to like Workman's now where it's like rammed and you're oh, yeah. at the bar yeah. with loads of different people and you're shoulder to shoulder with people. And it's, you know, that, that sounds hellish now to think about it. Like, <laughs> Because there's so many situations where you have to stand close to people or the, that we had to do that in like even just buses like planes all that kind of stuff people are still going to feel uncomfortable about that because this is it's been months uh we've been in this situation so i i'd be interested to see how things change mm-hmm. you know i don't know what do you, i think i don't know maybe people I think people are, will adjust pretty pretty well. I, I hope they will. I think maybe for a month or two after, hopefully, please God, when this when this passes, that you know it'll be a bit awkward. But I think I think after a month or two or three, that people will start to relax and get comfortable again with, with crowds and stuff like that. But who knows? You know, who knows? And who knows when this is ever going to go away as well? There's no guarantee that this is just going to disappear. You know. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I haven't, I haven't thought really about how long it's been or how long it's going to be. I just sort of take it week yeah. by week. Yeah, I'm the same. Because otherwise, you try to, you know, if you think about like whenever the Leo Ranger said it was going to end all together, you're just like, Jesus Christ, that's months. <laughs> 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 you know, <laughs> try to panic when I when he comes on the TV and says stuff like that. You know. Yeah, I, I take it day by day as well. I I find it hard, like. I know you're, you're, well, I don't know if you're meant to keep up with the news, but a lot of people do. I, I find it hard to do that lately. Um, it just... You know, I, I have to because it's my job. Yeah, 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 yeah. I work for a few different newspapers. So I, like, when I'm sh- on shift, I'm reading the news all the time. Um, so when I'm ever, I'm, ever I'm not on shift, I don't look at the news. I don't look at what's going on. <laughs> I, just, I haven't got the space for it, you know what I mean? Like... So, yeah yeah does it ever get a bit training where you're just like oh this is you know doom and gloom every time you're looking at the news it does for me like it's like i know it is all doom and gloom and that's the reality of it but i just kind of sometimes i just want to be in my own little bubble of everything's grand and stick on netflix and just you know have some popcorn and pretend that everything's all right so i like at the start when the coronavirus did hit i was kind of doing these like Philip DeFranco style with a bit of comedy uh, updates. I know with a bit of comedy sounds ridiculous, but I was adding a bit of comedy to like coronavirus coming over. You know, nobody had it in Ireland and I wasn't adding comedy in like taking the piss out of coronavirus, just kind of mm. updating people of what's going on and, you know, having banter with people in the chat as well while I was doing that. And I was, I was doing that and the, the videos were, you know, the live streams were, were going good and people, they were entertained. People were coming back to see what was, was happening and kind of getting started to get their updates from me but then i was like after like a week of doing it or two weeks i was just like i can't this isn't for me do you know what i mean this is just it's too um it's too real for me to to do that type of content and to to be dissecting it every day and looking at the numbers because that's what we were doing talking about the numbers and how they're rising and you know telling people to to stay at home and stuff like that because I, I got very interested in it very early on for some reason i just caught the the wuhan thing and i think it was sky news it was just a little five minute piece on sky news i think it was in january like early january when i caught it and i kind of seen it seen it unfolding from there so i think i was i was um i had a bit of an obsession with it for a bit and then when it when it hit ireland then i was like oh i need to stop being so obsessed about this or i'm gonna drive myself crazy you know what i mean yeah yeah well it got so serious that you can't 
you can't joke about it because there's thousands of people dying. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just not. And it's one of those things like when it's really far away or whatever, you, you can make, not that you can make jokes about it, but you do because it's not anywhere near you. Mm. And it's you know, dark humor, black humor or whatever. But once it arrives and once it starts to affect people, once you see of course. just the scale of it, mm. it just, I don't know. And I'd say there'd be a lot of people who have tweets from say the start of the year where they were joking about it. Mm. And then suddenly they're going to be dug up in like a year's time being like, oh, mm. this person tweeted about this. Definitely, like, definitely will be. No, I never, <laughs> I never actually joked about coronavirus though. Mm. I mean, I was, I was, you know, using humor in the comments, not about coronavirus, just with people like, oh, hello, welcome yeah. to the live stream. Uh, let's update, you know, kind of in that sense, you know, I mm. a bit of humor. I wasn't, I never joked about coronavirus though. I used humor against the coronavirus really. But although I did have like thumbnails with like, you know, me with a mask on, you know, yeah, 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 which is kind of, you know, I suppose taking the piss in a little, in a little sense, but I never actually took the piss out of, you know, coronavirus itself, but yeah, to, to kind of do that style of, you know, entertainment while informing people of the news, I just, I was like, nah, this is, this isn't right, you know? So I yeah. kind of, I kind of scrapped doing that um, because people were coming, looking for me then for serious journalistic updates on coronavirus, you know, like <laughs> at what time will he be online? Cause I want to know what's going on. And I was like, no, I'm, I'm in too deep back away. So I just yeah. kind of <laughs> turned the arse, you know, you know, just backed off. Uh, have you found anything? Uh, people, a lot of people have, 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 you know, discovered new skills or learned new things or kind of been procrastinating about themselves and learn new things about themselves. Have, has there been any good things for Michael Fry um, out of this kind of lockdown and isolation and, you know, being stuck away from your normal life? Yeah, I, I uh, well, I, I started the, the running thing and I've actually lost a good bit of weight since I started. Nice, man. Uh, nice. Since the lockdown started, you know what I mean? Because now, like, I can't go out for pints, so I can't, you know, <laughs> drink, look and get a beer belly, you know what I mean? So it's kind of, that's been nice and it's been nice being able to kind of control that a little bit more because I'm not rushing to work and buying a coffee every day and you know, all kind of stuff. So I saved a lot of money and lost a lot of weight. And yes, nice. it kind of helped me health wise a lot. Um, and then apart from that, I suppose I've been watching, I started doing the, the co video party at the start. I don't know if you've been following that. So Alison Spittle every night has been uh, putting on a film on Netflix and everyone tweets along with it. So I watched. Oh, okay. No, I didn't. Didn't know that. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of films I hadn't seen before because I'm not really a film person, but I just started doing that. So that's been great. Like I've been consuming a lot more nice. films and stuff like that instead of just watching the news or, you know, lying in my bed. <laughs> so, I don't any, know. Any recommend, recommendations from these films that you've been watching? That's the uh, one. What, what I saw, uh, I've never seen Goodfellas before, believe it or not. Oh, yeah, yeah. Classic. Most of the classic films I haven't seen. So, like, it's helped with that. So, I saw Goodfellas. Nice. Uh, I saw Kingsman the other day. That's fucking great. Like, King, never King Ping. Kingsman. Kingsman. Oh, King. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I've yeah. never seen that. Yeah, no, it's great. Uh, and then there's some other ones that people like said they were class. I watched Happy Gilmore on the, the COVID video. Uh, you've, only, you've only seen it now? I've never seen it before, no. So, I don't know. What? What? For me, like, I was just kind of... <laughs> <laughs> you were opening up to a whole new world. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Gilmore's class, though, isn't it? I didn't enjoy it. What? Kind of, yeah, yeah. What? So, I think I would have enjoyed it had I watched it when I was 12. Yeah, 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 right? yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. It's, like, there's some great fucking lines in it. But then I was watching it, I was like, this is actually a bit shite. You know what I mean? It's a bit <laughs> slow and it's a bit... I've seen funnier films, do you know what I mean? Like, so I didn't understand the hype everyone had for it. But like, Yeah, may know. maybe it's because it was one of them films that we were all, you know, teenagers watching it and it was hilarious, or, or kids even watching that film. Maybe if it came out, like, on Netflix today, people would be like, you know, a newer version of it or whatever, people would be like, hmm. <laughs> I don't know, though. I think it's a classic. I think it's a classic. I don't know. I don't know. Like, I don't know. I, I probably, I, if I'd seen it earlier on, I'd probably feel the same way about it as I do about like, say Step Brothers or like, you know, those really quotable, like bench warmers. Like those yeah, 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 yeah. Step like, Brothers is amazing though. Step Brothers is an absolute classic. So what, what movies are you into? Are you into horrors? Are you into comedies? Are you? Uh, into yeah, usually comedies. I like a good slow burner. So stuff like The Wrestler or like Lady Bird or like those kinds of things I really like. 
Um, but I would I wouldn't actually be a film person that much. I remember I was talking to my brother and I was saying all the films I hadn't seen. So I've never seen like Saving Private Ryan. I've never seen the Godfather movies. Oh like, god! Like any kind of, I've never seen the Matrix. <laughs> 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 you, you kind of say it with a hint of pride. You you have a little tinge of like, yeah, I haven't fucking seen that. Get over it. <laughs> yeah, it just, like, unless it was on TV, I didn't watch it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then I've seen like the forty-year-old virgin and like Troy like four hundred times. <laughs> you know. Yeah, they must have only bought like a certain amount of films that they had to repeat for the next three or four years. There was like IDV2 used to the same three films on on the loop, so it would always be like knocked up, forty year old virgin, Troy, and I'd watch him every week for fucking years, like you know. <laughs> yeah, like Comedy Central used to uh, have white chicks on every fucking night. <laughs> yes, good. yes. Oh I must God. have seen that film about two hundred times involuntarily. <laughs> 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 oh, crazy stuff. So, um, yeah, you, you've been you've been doing a bit of doing a bit of health you've been catching up on your films um have you been doing any reading any new books what does my no actually like i don't read either so (laughs) so. you look like a reader that's why i asked i don't know like i i studied i did french and spanish in college and i did like with that you have french and spanish literature if you know what i mean so i find it really hard to read for fun because when you do languages you don't completely understand everything. You have to look it up. And so it's work to go oh, through okay. books and films and shit like that. So like, it really put me off reading. Oh, I haven't really it? watched it or read anything decent. So, so you years. open a book and you kind of get an element of college PTSD. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I think because of social media, like I work on social media and I'm on social media like all the time. I think my attention span does not go beyond like 280 characters like do you know what I mean like, <laughs> like, like, you'll read you you read the book and you're just like this could have been a tweet this whole yeah. book could, could have been a tweet listen man i love what you're doing um I, i've i've been a fan of yourself and and some of your sketches have popped up on, on my timeline over the over the last few years so it's actually been a pleasure to chat to you and, and keep doing what you're doing man and i hope to see you uh i hope to see you on stage as well sometime in the future yeah, yeah, we'll we'll see, we'll see. Um, we'll see. Thanks for having me on. I've actually had a good time. So thanks very much, man. It's, it's been a great chat, and make sure you watch them them films. You know what I mean? Get yeah. get, get them. <laughs> this is the time in your life when you can get them classics into you. So yeah. uh, def, definitely go for it. Where can people check you out um, online if they're if they're listening to this podcast now? I am it. at Big Dirty Fry on all platforms. I don't think I have <laughs> Big Dirty it. Fry is genius, but I. Yeah, I, I, I only used it because nobody had taken it before. So I saw it on Twitter and I was like, oh, I wonder if anyone used this. And I was like, oh, they haven't. Well, that's mine now. So I use it everywhere. So I've used it on Snapchat, Twitter, Facebook. I think it's TikTok as well, Instagram. It's all big, dirty fry. So like, yeah, I'm well branded. <laughs> well, well branded. Oh, so you have it on all the social. Oh, nice. See, you're ahead of the cor- curve. I'm going to get some advice from you, Michael. Um, yeah, so listen, I could chat to you all night, but hopefully we'll get you on again because um, I've, I've only started this podcast. I'm on like episode seven now, or, or six, mm-hmm. but I want to like after a while get people back on. So it would be a pleasure to get you back on um, when I'm a bit more prepared next time as well. Um, mm-hmm. And we can have more chats in the future if, if, if I, uh, the hour long way didn't upset you too much. <laughs> You'll be hearing from my agent. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I'll buy a pint or two to make up for it in the future. My <laughs> and appreciate you coming on. Listen, have a good one and uh, we'll chat soon. Okay, cool. Thanks Bye, very man. much, man. See you later. Cheers. <laughs>